Alright, welcome to another episode of the paint booth. Pont's paint booth once again. Uh, this time we're going back to the Adeptus Mechanicus range and we are... What the hell? thought I had something hanging off of my mic. Uh, this time we're working on the Taraxi uh, unit. So, I'm going to be doing up about three of these guys. I actually have ten. But, I mean, I only really need to do three for the video. Uh, this one here is the leader, or squad leader. Squad alpha, actually. And then this is what the normal guys look like. They have that uh, uh, Fletchet Carbine rifle. And now this is uh, one variation of the uh, the Taraxi. Uh, what, am I, what am I trying to say? Unit. Actually, these guys, the Sky Stalkers, you know, they have these uh, Fletchet rifles. And then they've also got uh, some grenades you can kind of see on the belt there, maybe. There we go. So they basically fly around and drop bombs. And uh, they can also be used to uh, suppress units on the field. Or on the play board. I should say not field. I mean, this is all, this is all made up stuff. Uh, the other variation of these are guys, are the, um, the sterilizers. And they have uh, big flamer big long flamers basically anyways so as I said I got three of these guys right now uh, I do not or I, I do have the bases so as you can see they're gonna be they're eventually gonna be mounted on flying stands like so something like that and they'll be flying basically so they're big models but for now we'll leave them off the bases and worry about that later without dropping everything all right he's still good so what we're going to start off with is of course the base colors and what that is is that's going to be our hardened care paste which is our dark gray and then hit with the null oil which is our black uh, shade and so this is going to go over not too many parts. It's going to be, it's really just going to be their, uh, uh, kind of like their clothing or whatever. So pretty much on the forearms up here, uh, their thighs down here, because as you can see, uh, basically everything below the elbow and below the knee is actually a... Uh, mechanical prosthetic and then there's also uh, some parts on the torso that you can kind of see some of the uh, interior cloth or however you want to put it and so yeah that's pretty much going to be oh yeah and a little bit on the back too where the uh, uh, joints for the wings are and yeah that's pretty much going to be all the stuff that's actually going to be gray <laughs> Everything else on this model is going to be metallics and the canvas on the wings. I'm going to do uh, something else as well. So let's go ahead and get started with the heavy gray. Alright, so 
base. Oh, I still gotta do the shade here. <laughs> uh, you can kind of see. I guess I might as well show you. So yeah, we got uh, the heavy gray on the. Uh, I don't know why it's not coming into focus. The heavy gray. Someday. There we go. On the uh, more of the uh, fabricy parts of this guy's bodysuit. So it's not exactly black. But so now we're gonna go ahead and hit it with the null oil. It'll make it even more darker, but again, as you guys have seen before with my previous Mechanicus models is once I get the uh, the dry brushing going on top of this, then we'll start to uh, get plenty of details. And of course, as always, this is really just giving us our darker recessed details. In here, and since this is the first color, I don't have to be, I don't have to be too careful, really, with anything yet, because any uh, spilling, spilling, spillage is just going to get covered up as I go along. Squad leader done, or the alpha, I should say, is what these guys are designated. And this guy. And you may notice as you're uh, watching me paint, there's a lot of details on uh, these Mechanicus models. So I got, I'm definitely going to have my work uh, cut out for me pretty soon here. There's a lot of pipes, a lot of uh, uh, metal parts, especially in the, you know, the arms and legs, and then of course everything on these... Uh, his backpack and armor and uh, flight pack too. Right, there's that guy. And last but not least, we got this homeboy. I don't know why I said homeboy. Doesn't really apply. Also, I apologize, the wings kind of make it uh, hard for you guys to see what I'm doing sometimes. And of course, since I'm not painting with the base on yet, I can't just uh, clip onto that either. Let's just get some more of this. Alright. So that's the start of the Sky Stalkers. And as you guys already know, we're going to go ahead and let this wash dry off before moving on. Alright, so I believe the, uh, the wash work that we've done on the, uh, or I should say shade work, on the bodysuits on these guys is sufficiently done. So now we are going to go ahead and do the uh, the lighter gray dry brush. That is going to be done with our dark sea gray. And uh, well, I'm a little bit limited on time, so this is all I'm going to do for now. But so that's basically just going to go again over the uh, arms and legs and parts of the torso. 
So let's go ahead and get that started. Alright, so that is the bodysuits all finished. I'll give you a bit of a closer look here in a second. So I just make sure that I got all this shit cleaned up. Get rid of some of that paint. I need a new rag too. I'll deal with that in a second here, but so once this comes into focus you could see one of these days. And he, there we go. Yeah, so we got the edges kind of on the bodysuit and sort of some of the more pronounced surfaces. And again, it's really just the uh, the arms and the legs because everything else is going to be, well, something else. So we will eventually get back to this. All right, so we've taken care of the bodysuit, as you've already seen. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna get into some of the uh, like the metals and the uh, the browns and reds, essentially. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm actually gonna start off with leather brown. And so what that's gonna do is that's gonna be in a couple spots. First of all, you'll see that they're they're all wearing like a um a skull cap hood type of thing. So save for the uh the pipes and electronics and stuff, that's going to be leather. And then also, it's kind of hard to see here, but their rifles and also uh this guy's pistol in a little bit of a sense. Well, they the 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 style of weapons that these guys have is that they're made to be kind of like a renaissance baroque type of Thing. So there's wood elements in there, primarily in the stock and part of the body. So again, leather brown. And then last but not least, along the body, there's a bunch of uh, belts and straps on these guys' torso. So once again, brown. So let's go ahead and get started with that. Leather pieces and straps done, aka their uh, jump harness, I guess, especially around the legs. And in a sec, well, I'm going to move on in a sec. Alright, now to get to the real uh, meat and potatoes. Of this model, we're going to go into the uh, the bronze segments. 
And I say meat and potatoes because there's really a lot of sections. There's a bunch of different areas, you know, mainly on the uh, the legs. Everything below the knee and below the elbow is metal. So there's going to be a few sections there. And, of course, like the main body of their guns. Uh, what else? Their chest armor. And just a, a lot, all these uh, bigger parts of the uh, the wings and rocket assemblies and their, uh, their little flapping arms here. So, without further ado, let's just go ahead and get started, because, like I said, it's a lot. got through that is uh, quite a bit of material or not material but space details that's the word I'm thinking of as you can see we got our brass on it comes into focus so quite a few areas there mainly the uh, the main bodies of the wings and a little bit on his torso and sort of just all over so we are going to give that a sec. Okay, moving on with our metallic paints. We are now uh, moving on to the next color that is gunmetal. This is more of our uh, regular kind of steel for you know, quite a few parts. There's a lot of bits still in like the uh, the hands and the legs. Then of course uh, the gun barrels, stuff like that. Uh, the engines on the back of their jetpacks and then also kind of the, uh, the, the, the fingers coming out into the wings. And again, this is also going to be Probably just as time consuming. Although there aren't as big of uh, areas that I have to do, so that's good. So let's go ahead and get into it.
Alright, that is the steel parts done. And let's see, this one. This one took a bit, so. In a moment, we shall continue. You know, it's true what they say about pretty much every video on YouTube. Whether it be, don't read the comments. Whether you be scrolling through your, you know, favorite video, your favorite show, podcast, whatever. All you see as you're looking through is, you know, things like, oh, why do they talk about this? Why do they talk about that? I don't like this guest. I don't like that host. Yeah, blah, 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 blah. Well, to which I say, get your own show. And now, with Buzzsprout, you can. It's that easy. Buzzsprout is a podcast hosting service that provides uh, hosting not only on their own site, but also on pretty much every other uh, podcast platform out there. Every single major one. Get yourself listed in iTunes, Pandora, Stitcher, iHeartRadio. I'm on all of these with... You, with this podcast, as a matter of fact. Uh, and Buzzsprout, you know, it provides a bunch of other services, too. Not only just hosting, but indefinite hosting. So, whatever you put on there, if you have indef if you have a subscription, it's there until the end of time. Or at least until the power goes out. Uh, Buzzsprout also provides you with avenues of monetization, be it through affiliate programs kind of like this, and also through uh, Podcorn, which is a sponsorship portal where you can go on and provide your, uh, submit your proposals and, you know, hopefully get money that way. <clears throat> and a new feature that Buzzsprout has is uh, Magic Mastering, which is a uh, auto level you can apply to your audio files as they go into the service and it'll help you get all the uh, the little clicks and the pops out of here, which I know I have going on in mind still, but and it's also helpful for situations where you have more than one person, or maybe you're doing a show over Zoom or what have you. Magic Mastering helps with that. And if you like listen, if you're listening to my show, if you go to the bottom of the show notes and use my uh, link, you can start and you can start a subscription with Buzzsprout today. Furthermore, if you're using my link, you will also get a 20 or yeah, you will get an Amazon gift card after the after your second billing period. So, you know, I win, you win, everybody wins. I'd say, you know, if you got something to say, go ahead and say it. Use Buzzsprout, get your own podcast today. Okay, so we've got one metallic color left to do on these guys, and as you can remember, or that is the, uh, the screaming bell from the Citadel range, and as you can remember, unfortunately, uh, there are no dropper bottle substitutes for this color, so I'm just doing a little bit out of the pot, and that is basically going to be for all of the small, finer details all over these guys, mainly just, uh, kind of like ring around stuff and like the pinions for the uh 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 what, what, what are these called digits i guess i'd say fingers but it's not an actual bird uh well anyways let's just go ahead and get into it
that is all the metal parts done. Or, well, just about done, because we have one final important step in this section is to add in our Agrax Earthshade. That's going to be done throughout all the metal parts and the, uh, the leather stuff that we did earlier. And that's going to give this give these guys some real character so without further ado and I'm actually gonna grab this thing it's one of my other paint handles this one has the uh, the alligator clips so that'll be used to hold up some of these guys and keep them dry-ish so let's go ahead and get started with that and actually I'm just gonna do the bodies first and then I'll do the wings later off screen because that's easier. Okay, that is it for now. We are going to let uh, the wash on these guys dry off. And then actually, like I said before, I'm going to do the uh, the wing packs off screen real quick and then let those dry off again. And we will see what that looks like in a moment. All right, we got all of our metallics done. And as I mentioned before, off camera, I went ahead and finished up the, uh, uh, what's them call it? The washes or shades. I keep getting mixed up. They, they, they've, they've named these a few different things over the years. Like I remember whenever they first had uh, this type of paint, they were just called inks. And then uh, they were washes and now they're shades. So shades and as I mentioned before I went ahead and put the shade on the uh, the wing packs as well for all three of these guys and what we're doing now is it's time to work on some of the pipes and stuff that they have around here namely they've got the two main ones here you can't really see that much on the uh, the inside arms for the wings and uh, well, some on the body and mask, and then of course these uh, two cables running in the back. And what I'm going to do for those is we're going to use ash gray again. That's our that's my lightest gray, and then of course hit all that with null oil. Uh, let's see. Actually, while I'm working on that, since this will probably be shorter, I'm also going to do up the eye lenses real quick. And that's going to be done with our sick green. Yeah. So first, well, I'm just going to do it all at once. First up is the ash gray. So let's get into it.
Uh, let me uh, bust in here real quick. Uh, as I'm doing these guys, I realize that normally... So well, you, you guys have seen me do a couple of Mechanicus models already. And normally there's a ton of extra uh, wires and stuff as well that I would normally do up. But there aren't as many this time, so I'm going to go ahead and throw that into the mix right er, as well. And so those are going to be done with uh, pure red and electric blue. Oh, uh, and again, I'm going to throw those in before doing the null oil shade, just because, I mean, this stuff we need to let that dry a bit. But I've already got the ash gray done, so I don't need that anymore. And I will stay on the same order. So next up is the sixth green. We got some of the details done, or the usual details. Let's hold this guy. Whoa. Without spilling everything. Uh, as you can see, we got some of the uh, the wire, or, well, all the wires done. And they got some fancy eye lenses going on. And some of the tubing's done, especially in the back here. So, it's always, we'll let the shade dry off for a while, and we'll come back to this. Alright, so now we're on to the final details of, uh, well, the guys themselves. I haven't started on the bases yet, that's going to be... Uh, next after this, but what we're doing now is first, actually first, uh, just on the, uh, the alpha here is now we're going to do up the, uh, his cattle prod thing that he's got here. And what that is, is these, uh, so the, the fork, the tubes, and then there's a coil on the inside. That's all going to be done with shining silver. And then I'll go over it with a little bit of the Drakenoff Nightshade that is our uh, blue shade. Yeah. There isn't really a lighter one. Uh, so th this will do for now. And then what we're going to do... Actually, I'll do the shade last. Before that, what I'm also going to do is I'm going to hit all the, uh, the canvas in the wings. And that's going to be done with uh, our coarse pale paint, which is technically more of like our uh, very light skin tone. So like this is, like I, I use this on the, uh, well actually you'll see later. So th this is kind of like what you would use for, you'd imagine elves skin tone would be, you know, kind of like a lighter fair skin. But um, what I'm gonna do in this case is, is just gonna be flat paint. I'm not gonna use any uh, wash or anything on the canvas. So it's just gonna be this color flat and we'll see how that looks. So first I'll go ahead and put on the silver and then go from there.
Okay, so I'm actually going to go ahead and break for now. You kind of get the idea. Uh, these are... So I, I, I definitely have to put under the coat on these wings. Actually, let me see if I turn the light off. You might get a... Yeah, so that's a real, like, canvasy color going on. So, again, I'll have to put another coat on these guys. Just because it, it is taking a while. And then I'll also do the, uh, uh, the nightshade, or the, uh, yeah, the nightshade on the ta on his, uh, taser lance, or his prod off camera. And then I'll show you whenever we, uh, come back, which is when we come back, I'm going to be doing the bases next. And as you can see, I don't have any, uh, elements on here. I'm going to go ahead and add some stuff again off camera and then start working on it. All right, so we can see the results of ooh, my off-camera work on these models. As you can see, our, uh, I went ahead and double-coated the wings, and they have a nice... Uh, wow, I'm burping all, all of a sudden. Very professional. Uh, but they, they have a nice uh, canvas color all up on the wings, just as we want. So there's the front, there's the back. Very uh, Da vinci -ian. So now they can fly around and all that, all that good stuff. So that was one of the uh, one one of the basic Sky Stalkers. Here's the other one that I was working on. A little more widespread, or yeah, wingspan spread. And then of course, the group Alpha. And also with this guy, I did up the. Uh, the prod or taser goad is what it's actually called, and as you can see, yeah. So that's the uh, the silver color, and then I put on a light layer of uh, blue. Uh, what's this called again? Drakenoff nightshade to kind of give it like just just a little bit of a blue tinge, like electricity or something like that. So now the actual models are finished. And it is now time to move on to the bases for these guys. As you can see, I went ahead and added a few elements onto the bases, like some pipes and skulls and, you know, just fun stuff like that. You'll also notice that there's five bases here, and that is because uh, these guys come in squads of five. So, I actually have the other two here, which I, I only just barely started working on, but I'm not, I'm not going to do that in a video here. However, I'm going to go ahead, since these are separate, and just for, uh, just for ease, I'm just going to go ahead and do all five of the bases up right now, and then I'll decide later which ones I actually want to attach to the guys here. <clears throat> so, what I'm going to do first is, obviously the skulls are going to be Drake Tooth. As we always been doing, that's our uh, kind of bony color. The uh, the eye beams that I got here, and then the pipes and some of the other ones, those are going to be done with our fancy gunmetal color. And then, of course, the ground is going to be done up with leather brown, or there's going to be well, yeah, a layer of leather brown over the whole thing. And then, uh, let's see, I was going to do the earth shade, but I'm actually going to hold off on that because instead I can go ahead and apply our Agrellan earth again, which is going to give us that uh, cracked earth. Uh, oh, what's the word? Not motif. Just uh, look, I guess. Cracked earth look, which is what we're going for. So... Let's go ahead and start off with the Drake's Tooth because this is the only one that requires a couple coats. So we'll start off with one coat, move on to the gunmetal, go back to this, 
and then leather and a grill and earth. So let's go ahead and get started. Alright, so we got the details down for these guys, or for these bases, I mean. Obviously, I haven't done the, uh, the earth shade yet, and I'm, er, right, I haven't done the earth shade yet. I'm not going to yet, but what I am going to do, as I discussed earlier, is apply the agrellin earth. Now, let's see, where is my, this brush. Now, so these two are, these three are still drying a little bit. So I'll start with this guy right here. And we're going to put, this thing will stay open. Whatever, where'd it go? Here we go. Liberal amounts of this stuff. So, yeah. And I do want it to kind of uh, mound up around uh, the different objects that I have on the bases, while also leaving some holes for where the uh, the toxic, sludgy stuff is going to go. Here we go, big old clump. And again, the nice thing about this type of paint is, you know, you can push it around quite a bit to cover pretty much whatever area you want. It's just nice and manipulable like that. So that, that one's got plenty on it. Let's get this guy next. Bunch around, well, actually, not in front of the pipe. Get a bunch around the back side of the pipe here. Really get it clumped up. Because we want it to look like it's coming out of the ground rather than just sort of being stuck on top. 
And th this is pretty much the most that you could do this effect without uh, getting into using green stuff, which I just don't want to do with this small of a model. Although you can get some pretty good effects, but that's not what I'm going for here. Also got to remember to get some more of this stuff because I'm starting to run a little low. Which is fine. Just means I'm using it good. Actually, that one's good like that. Let's get this guy next. along the middle here. size clump right there and let's get some slightly thinner along the back here oh here we go never mind go real thick here and a little bit along the edge that one good. Got a couple more here still. Get a bunch right here. In between this thing's horns. I'll get I'll make this area a little bit thicker. There we go. some more here. I really want to try and press up against the skull that I got without without making it look like it's uh kind of painted on. It's a little bit harder to uh get more um I don't want to say it. It doesn't build up quite as good as I'd want it to, just since it's still paint. Technically, well, literally. So this one isn't going to have quite as much sludge on it, but hey, whatever. Everything's different. And last. This guy. I think this one I'm going to make a lot more sludgier, which means I don't need as much of the earth effect going on. but I still want to get plenty on, so. Yeah, I like that. So, as always, we're going to let this dry. And then I'm also going to wait and apply the, uh, or, or not wait. I'm going to do the, uh, I'm going to apply the Earthshade off camera 
as well after this dries, just so that, you know, I'm not, I mean, you know what it's going to look like already, so I'll do that, and then we'll come back. When I come back, it'll be time to add the uh, the sludge effects, and then, you know, I'll pick out which bases of these that I want to do for the, uh, I want to attach to the guys that are already finished, so they're kind of going to go on like so, sort of. And they'll look cool. So, again, we will come back in a moment. Okay, so some unfortunately, uh, I had some technical difficulties. My camera and uh, a couple other things cut out on me for whatever reason. I probably just have too much stuff plugged into my laptop. But anyways, the good thing is is that you guys didn't really miss much. All I really did is uh, cleaned up the trim along the bases of these guys, and then went ahead and added in all the green toxic sludge. And got these guys glued down. So here is the finished Taraxa Sky Stalker. And as you can see, these guys take up quite a bit of space, especially compared to here's one of the uh, my unpainted Dire Avengers, just so you can kind of see just how high these guys actually are. It's pretty big. And I actually have a squad attended these guys, so that's going to... If you've been watching the video, that's going to take some time. So, anyways... There we go. Actually, here, I'll grab the leader. Leader of the squad. Uh, and anyways, so, as always, thank you for watching the Poncho's Paint Booth. Uh, if you liked this video, I got plenty more already in the books. And I got many many more along the way so you know here on youtube like and subscribe to my channel multi media you get this playlist you get my podcast the jankity ass podcast and of course you get my uh twitch playlist gutsy ass gamer and speaking of podcasts once again go uh look up the jankity ass podcast anywhere ev everywhere every major source that you can get podcasts in and also you know, check out Multimerity Media on Instagram and Facebook to, you know, just show your support, you know, like and subscribe, yada, 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 and to get updates whenever uh, new episodes of any of my stuff is released. And, of course, if you go into the uh, the All My Links website uh, listed at the, in the, um, cool, I forgot everything already, uh, listed in the show description, that's what I'm looking for, you'll also find my Amazon wish list. The Warhammer one will directly support this show to give me uh, more content to work on for you guys. And then, of course, the uh, the music list is more for the uh, the podcast. You know, more content there. So, anyways, yeah, stay tuned. I got plenty more coming along the way. And thanks again. Mm -hmm.